white 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 I have some serious concerns about what these two guys and a number of other politicians are doing to the country of my birth. Let me read to you the email which I'm about to send to Police Scotland, Scottish politicians and select Scottish government departments and their public servants. Dear Police Scotland, Scottish government employees, Scottish politicians, I'm planning a trip to Scotland in the coming months to visit friends and family, but I'm becoming increasingly concerned for my safety once I arrive in the country. This concern doesn't come from a fear of the bams, junkies and rages on the streets, but from a fear of laws that are being written and passed by politicians and senior bureaucrats, which will be enforced without question by Police Scotland. As a white man, I am afraid that the most powerful politicians in Scotland, First Minister Humza Yusuf and Scottish Labour leader Anas Sarwar, are stirring up hatred of white people and are pushing laws that would have me arrested for simply having an opinion that is critical of them, or for making a joke should a single person take offence to the joke. For those who don't know, Scotland is pushing through a new law that could see you jailed should you make a joke about one of several protected minority groups or for even making a comment in a private discussion in your own home should a single person decide to take offence to the comment. If a woman makes a simple statement like men cannot be women or men cannot give birth, something that was considered common knowledge until only a few years ago, then she can be prosecuted under this new law. This only a year after Humza was duping women into supporting him as first minister saying he would advance women's rights. But of course, this new law is incredibly vague, which will allow it to be used to prosecute some, while others will not be held accountable for committing the same crime. All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. I direct you to comments made in the Scottish Parliament on the 10th of June 2020 by Hamza Yusuf and Anaz Sarwar. While I'm disgusted by their comments, I would not normally call for prosecution of those who hold these beliefs, as I strongly believe in the right to freedom of speech and freedom of thought. However, by their own standards, it appears as if Hamza Yusuf and Anas Sarwar are guilty of stirring up hatred. Side note, this is the point I make, that some will be prosecuted using this law, while others will not be held accountable for the same crime. Now, they labelled this discussion in 2020 as a debate. There was no debate. It was two hours of straw man arguments trying to paint Scotland as an overwhelmingly racist country where the brown man doesn't stand a chance. Each politician took it in turns to give a little speech on why racism's bad and we've got to end all the racism. General statements which 99.9% .9 of people would generally agree with. I mean, who's going to argue against that? This pantomime is how politicians earn their high salaries. To my recollection, not one politician contributed to the other side of the debate. Not one said, well, let's wait a minute here. Yes, racism's bad, but we aren't a racist country. And not one of them pulled Humza and Anas up on their white, 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 white comments as they made the white majority bow down out of guilt at the fact that most people in Scotland are white and therefore most senior positions in Scotland are held by those who are white. When the most senior positions in Scotland are filled almost exclusively by those who are white. The Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. The Lord Advocate, white, 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 white. What percentage of white people hold senior government positions in Pakistan? Not one single politician raised this point during this so-called debate. Generally, I return to Scotland every 18 months or so and when I do visit home, I make jokes with my friends and we share our opinions on the state of the world. I make jokes about myself, about my friends, family, about politics, about racist politicians who hate white people, about straight people and gay people and trans people, I have opinions about all of these people. What's happened to Scottish folk? We used to be great at making a joke at our own expense. It was almost our identity. I mean, this is pretty much my whole life, taking the piss out myself. 
And it seems others were always fine with making jokes about us too, and we laughed along with them. And this is the key question in my email. Will I be arrested should a single person find my conversations or social media comments to be offensive, or if I express criticism of Hamza Yusuf? Now, I think this is a fair question. I'm critical of Scottish politicians. Will I be arrested for that? I'm critical of trans ideology. Will I be arrested for that? I make fun of trans ideology. I make fun of politicians. Will I be arrested for that? To police Scotland. I've always found you useless in my dealings with you when I lived and worked in Scotland. I understand at times your hands are tied, but you must speak up about these ridiculous laws if you truly wish to perform a valuable function in society. Push back against your superiors. Um, the BBC had an article titled Hate Crime Law Could Damage Trust in the Police. Like, there was much trust to begin with. It's laughable. One day I'm going to tell the stories of how inept the police were in Scotland over 20 years ago when I used to work in pubs over there. Believe me, there's very little public trust in the police to be further damaged. Scottish Government employees break this embracing of mediocrity and cowardice that seems to infect public servants like a virus. Yes, I know that you just want to shuffle some papers, pay your mortgage and write your own legacy as being stunning and brave for going along with the latest progressive cause. How about you show some actual bravery and reject this insanity? That can be your legacy. And individual politicians. Not one of you had the balls to point out that Scotland is predominantly white on the day that Humza and Anas guilt-tripped the white majority for simply existing. You have failed your constituents. Grow a pair and speak out against vague laws that are completely subjective and likely to be used by disingenuous ideologues to silence their critics while they themselves break those same rules with impunity. Thanks for your time. I look forward to your response, particularly to my question. Now, these two guys, let me tell you a bit about them. By their own admission, they come from very well-off families in Pakistan. I believe at least one of them has a father who was a tribal leader. They both went to the same posh private school in Glasgow, and yet despite claiming that the white majority is against them, they both managed to make it to Parliament. Now this private school will cost a total of over £160,000 per child if they attend all the way through from nursery to end of secondary school. That's over US$200,000, dollars, 300000 Australian dollars. How well off must their families be to be able to afford that just for schooling for one child? Both of these boys of privilege went to Glasgow University. Humza with a Master of Arts and Astun Dentistry, which I will say is a bit more valuable than Humza's University Participation Certificate, particularly in the UK. I mean, these two guys are the leaders of the two biggest political parties in Scotland. One of them's the First Minister. Yet they claim the system is rigged against them. Any time they are criticised, they say that it must be because of racism. For example, in 2021, Humza and his wife tried to sue a nursery because there was no place for their kid. They had to go into a queue like everybody else. The USAVs created hell for the staff there, accusing them of racism and dragging them through two years of legal proceedings before they eventually dropped the case ruining people's lives because they feel they shouldn't have to follow the same rules as everybody else. Now, I never opposed their families coming to the UK decades ago. Most people didn't. I didn't grudge them their fancy schooling. I don't grudge them their wanky university degrees. Hell, once I was older, I went and got myself a wanky university degree here in Australia, but I paid for it in cash. I didn't hold a grudge that these posh boys could make it into parliament. I just accepted that for most of my life. I certainly didn't give a shit about their skin colour. Nobody who grew up on my street got anywhere near Parliament. I myself managed to become comfortable middle class. That's about as good as anyone on my street got. I'm certainly not at the level of a politician. My family even joke that I'm posh now, certainly in the way that I speak. One of them said I sound English now. But I never held a grudge that people on my street couldn't make it to Parliament. 
I certainly didn't like or trust politicians much, but I left them to get on with their circus, feeling that that's just the way things were and nothing would change. Actually, that's not exactly true. I was sucked in by some of them when I was young. Um, I somehow thought they were, you know, representing the worker. I've never seen these two guys for their skin colour. I do see them as posh boys who had advantages I didn't have growing up. But despite that, I don't grudge them those advantages. I certainly did have an attitude towards people I saw as posh when I was a kid. I think that was part of the, the Brave New World type of conditioning that the working class had drilled into them, which ultimately makes them embrace their place in society and reject any attempt to help them step up. But I did get over that as I got into my 20s. I've met posh people who show they've got a great work ethic, fantastic people to be around. And I've met posh folk who are spoiled, entitled brats. That's life. But look at how they treat us plebs, with such contempt and disdain. There's no way these two Muppets could possibly represent the Scottish working class, and most of the other politicians too, to be honest. They've not lived your life. They cannot comprehend your life. But they will guilt trip you, and use emotional manipulation to win your support or to keep you silent. We've all been duped by the SNP and Scottish Labour for as long as I can recall, back to my childhood in the 80s. I didn't realise it at the time, but I realise it now. Middle class wankers would come into the community and secure your vote by treating you like a little pet, feeding into a sense of victimhood that may have had some truth at its core, but was used to suck ambition out of you, to keep you under their control. Now they've shifted their strategy from having you feel as the victim to having you feel constant guilt for things you've never done. Now that's not to say I think the Conservatives are the answer, but I'll elaborate on this another day. These people look down on you. And if you don't go along with what they say, then they will attack you. Remember what happened with the Brexit vote? If you voted to remain, then they gave you a pat on the head. If you voted to leave, then they lashed out at you and they called you stupid. The more diplomatic ones would use a um, softer language that was just as condescending. You know, well, the reason they've voted to leave the EU is because they're uneducated. They, they really don't know what they're voting for. They're not like me with my double master's degree. I'm fully educated. I'm smart. But the people voting to leave the EU, they've just not been educated. Believe me, I've met many people who have a range of degrees and you may not be as articulate as them, but you're certainly smarter than them. For the most part, their university degrees mean nothing. Lose your fear. Don't let them guilt you into submission. These politicians do not represent you. I know that George Orwell gets quoted a lot, but there are a few lines from 1984 that I frequently have spinning around in my head when I get frustrated at what these politicians in Scotland have done to the working class. So long as they, the proles, continued to work and breed, their other activities were without importance. Left to themselves, like cattle turned loose upon the plains of Argentina, they had reverted to a style of life that appeared to be natural to them, a sort of ancestral pattern. Heavy physical work, the care of home and children, petty quarrels with neighbours, films, football, beer, and above all, gambling filled up the horizon of their minds. To keep them in control was not difficult. Can you see the parallels to your own lives? A life of physical labour and, and on top of that taking care of the family which leaves you too exhausted to contemplate much else after the working day ends so you fall into trashy TV shows, endless arguments with the neighbours or family dramas, the football, any minor squabble, manufactured or otherwise, to keep you from thinking too much. I mean, just this weekend I saw videos of fighting in Glasgow between groups of Celtic and Rangers fans. All that wasted effort. If only they could realise. Which leads me to another Orwell quote. If there was hope, it must lie in the proles. If only they could somehow become conscious of their own strength. 
They need only to rise up and shake themselves like a horse shaking off flies. If they choose, they could blow the party to pieces tomorrow morning. Surely, sooner or later, it must occur to them to do it. If there is hope, it lies in the proles. If they could become conscious of their own strength, they would have no need to conspire. History does not matter to them. 